Hello, hello my good students. Welcome back to our War on the Sea Let's Play series on our Total Domination Let's Play series as the US Naval Forces. Joining straight after our previous episode where we did a few uh, important things which are somewhat changing our game here. Uh, we retreated, took our invading troops off of Guadalcanal. So we've just left uh, an empty 3,000 supplies there with uh, no troops there after realizing it was probably a bad idea to go in with just that amount of troops. Uh, definitely invading a little too early there. And um, by the time um, I'd already done that, someone had actually alerted me, and suggested that uh, we do actually focus on fighting, which was in my mind anyway, but they suggested doing this because um, I've noticed this in the game where the more, the more you take away from the enemy, the less they push you. And that's definitely something that happens. So if we take away Guadalcanal, I think we'll start seeing less and less of these uh, horrible task forces um, like uh, the Yamato uh, that we've seen. We saw that he's in as well. Um, and I want to make something of this carrier, you know? Like I said in the previous episode, oh, all we've done is just sink uh, cargo ships. It costs a couple carriers now, sure, but uh, it's just not enough for me. I've got the bloodthirst in me. So I want to do that. Um, so we're taking away from Guadalcanal, put it to the side, do it a bit later. Um, so if we're going to do that, uh, we're going to carry on like we did in the previous episode where we bombarded the Shortland Islands. We're currently on the retreat from that with zero munitions on our heavy cruisers and battleship. Very dangerous position to be in indeed, which is why we're still working in tandem very closely with this Essex. Um, looking perhaps in the future to give that particular task force um, perhaps a bug or an independence of its own. Um, so that we can go around and uh, give that some protection, just some fighter protection of its own uh, if it is going to bombard a bit later. So we'll have a look at that. Other than that, really, that's uh, our current goal for today, just to get back to the New Hebrides and rearm. Uh, we'll see how I feel after that. Uh, of course, that's not all we're going to do today because that would be very boring. Um, so, yeah, let's have a look on the map and see what we can do. Okay, so um, speaking of uh, points and getting a CVL up, let's just double check our dockyard. The Bogue still has eight days in there until we get reimbursed from that, which is actually an ideal time um, because uh, that is obviously just over a week. We have just been resupplied as well. And you know what? Um, people have been asking for this and I promise it's been on the top of my list uh, after getting this battleship out. Um, and of course the Essex. We're going to actually get horror of horrors, two uh, destroyers, two destroyers, two submarines. Uh, in fact, we have the points to spare. Why don't we get four so that we can get one group for Guadalcanal and another group for um, the Solomon Sea. So let's get one over here. Uh, if we get two Gatos once again, go out over here. Give us some early warning if possible um, so they can cover under the bow fight as well of any invading forces there that would be ideal absolutely ideal um, so that gives us some soft scouting and uh choose the way that american torpedoes work some soft counters for any uh, uh carrier fleets or carrier task forces that come in um so we do have 50 points remaining do we want to spend them right now is the question um, there's nothing really burning on my list of uh, things to get other than perhaps a wasp for um, people suggested once again around the Mill Bay sort of area which is absolutely a very good point. Um, like I was saying I do want a CVL for the war spike group but there's no point sending that out by itself. By the time it gets out here uh, the war spike will be in a fairly decent position. Uh, you can see the aircraft coming over here. I believe these are zeros um, from the top of my head from when we sunk a carrier. Um, I'll just double check. It's been a few minutes since I last recorded uh, when that was. Yeah, so we sunk the Tayo on the, today. Yeah, 2nd of September. Brilliant. So, um, that's where these are coming from. They will die off once their fuel reserves are depleted. Um, so we can, once again, see any submarines on the map because we have just loaded in the game. And we can see this one. Absolutely fine. We can have a go at that. Um, do the Kingfishers, they do take depth charges, but there's not really enough to warrant sending that out, if you ask me. We could take out some Mariners, perhaps, with some depth charges. 
they're really the only things that can get over there right now. Just going to check our stocks over here. I think if we're not going to invade Guadalcanal, what our next major um, project should be is getting a level 3 airfield on Melissa. It's going to take some time. Absolutely going to take some time. We're also going to try for a level 3 on Milne Bay as well, since we're not too far away from guessing that. Couple fuel drops, one supply drop, easy stuff. Um, so having said that, I might actually want to increase the amount of supply ships we have in both areas. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. Have three C3s over here, two for engineering, one for supplies. Might get another um, Cimarron. Might as well. Might as well. Let's get, uh, in that case, one of those over here. And what we can do is finally give them some destroyer escort. Uh, I was thinking about getting a DE. Uh, the thing about, which one do we want? That's the question. Which one has, uh, these all have radars and such. There's one or two without depth charges, I think. I think these will all do. I think these will all do very nicely. They're very cheap, very cheerful. Uh, the way their depth charges work is because uh, they're fired, they're launched off the front of the ship, these ones. So it's a very interesting design to use. We get two of those, I think. It's going to cost 25. So just get two of those, purely for submarine engagements. Brilliant. Uh, we'll watch the supplies of these in a second. Put those up in just a minute. Actually, we'll load up some supplies for here right now, actually. Manage cargo, fuel, and we'll put some more troops on this. Only 80, not a bother there at all. We'll do the same for this group over here that is coming over to pick up some more stuff. They do have two destroyers, not a problem. So we'll get, I think, another Simmer in there, I think. Get another Euler. Bring that over right now, just uh, so we remember. Cool, do that. Pick up supplies and such, do that. Cool. So we can merge those groups and go straight on over to Milne Bay when we're ready. And you know what? I think that's fine for now. So we're just going to carry on and uh, I think the next thing we'll do is get intercepted by these fighters here. Uh, we do have a little bit of fuel left there. Um, how many do we have left here? 14 available. Have lost a few Corsairs. We do have quite a few out scouting and that is needed. So we are going to launch a few more here. Uh, once we are allowed to. We need to wait 0.4 hours, so that's okay. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so um, I actually completely forgot that we launched some B-17s to handle this group. Shall we have a look at that? I would, yeah, I think we bloody should. You know what? Um, this group is on the retreat. We're going to anger a few people now. We're going to try a low altitude bomb with the B-17s. Spicy for sure, very very spicy, um, but we're gonna go for it. We're gonna absolutely go for it, and we're gonna try. We haven't detected the Congo. We have detected the Congo. It is number one over here. Can try and get that with one group, and um, oh, it seems a bit of a waste to try and hit a supply ship with um, B-17s, doesn't it? But we might as well go through, uh, let's just get everyone on the Congo, shall we? Get everyone on the Congo, because we will absolutely lose people on the approach there. Uh, oh, let's go for that. We'll go for 100 meters altitude for now. I am expecting there to be zeros about, since they are still on the strategic map. Uh, let's go down here, try and turn hard, take manual control over this, I think. It's going to be very, very spicy though, because of course uh, there's so much AA about. So, so much AA about. We need the time to maneuver as well. Let's get these going straight over here. Get these a wider berth here. They can carry on straight like that. These guys can turn round, dive down a tad more. And what they can do is turn in and actually they're going to press attack now on the Congo. To do, uh, been enjoying, uh, finding very good luck by telling everyone to break and attack individually. Very, very non-historical tactics here for sure. Um, but if it works, it works, you know? If it works, go for it. Absolutely go for it. It's just going to reduce our altitude here and tell this group to attack as well because uh, we've got a very nice line on there. Just hoping the first leading group there can turn round in time 
to actually hit that Congo. We may need to adjust their speed. So I'm just going to go over and watch them. That will be from number 8 onwards, surely. Should be okay. Hopefully they can get around there are the zeros. Yep, there's our first loss, but we're getting very, very close to this Congo. Getting very, very close indeed. We are dropping. Just overshooting though. Not too much. Three hits is fine. Three hits is fine. Just waiting for this group, really. Oh, did we? That was a bomb. Skipped over to the transport there. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, that's four more bombs on the Congo. <laughs> That will encourage them to retreat. Absolutely encourage them to retreat. Uh, I'm just for the sake of order, once again, going to get um, uh, not one massive group. Let's get this lot. Uh, 7, 9, 10, 11 to form up together. If we go to a box, form up, high, high altitude. This group can form up as well into a box and get a high altitude as well. Just make sure they get out of there. Uh, I'm not expecting to keep a lot of them. But that's okay, they will replenish for free. Let's take an action report. Heavy to moderate, you know what, absolutely fine. That might develop, might develop. But it will force them to retreat. Absolutely force them to retreat. Oh, brilliant sight. Brilliant sight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, the unorthodox is the way to go for sure. We were taking a multiple hits. We burned the hold. The Allies set a trap here and we sailed into it. Casualties running high. We need assistance. Okay, so unfortunately, we couldn't wait around for that. We did lose all but one B 17. And part of that is obviously we were chased by so many zeros. Gonna happen. Um, but I've been made aware, and I have been—I have seen this in my own uh, playthroughs. Um, there is currently a bug in the game where um, enemy wildcats and enemy zeros can't be downed. They're invincible. Very strange. Weird. So uh, puts a bit of a spanner in the works there. Just makes you think what's happened to uh, the game with this update. But we've completely forgotten to look at this submarine over here with all that excitement. Completely overshot it. So let's try for that. Any zeros as such that we're going for the war spike have retreated. Does look like these possibly nails are coming out, so we'll see about that. No, they're going back home. So we'll have a look at this submarine then. Okay, so we have sighted it. Um, just about over. The bearing is roughly 80. So we're going to try and find that uh, with the finder over here. Uh, yeah, 80 is roughly there, so let's tell our mariner to go straight over there, full speed. I'm hoping it's not spotted us, but uh, visibility is 54%, so that's not the worst. I wonder if we can still see it out there, actually. Uh, it's roughly 80, wasn't it? I can't see it now. I bet that's submerged. Bet that's submerged. Ah, uh, it's really unlucky. It's really unlucky. We'll snap back to uh, any news, otherwise going straight to the strategic map, I think. Okay, so um, the course of the Congo task force does look like it's going northern. Um, not entirely a problem there, because we do have the Essex. Um, we need to down it, if that's the case, before that gets over to our war spike group, which we are going to take control of here and just realign its course so it doesn't take quite doesn't go quite so directly to the Congo maybe a little bad for our health if that happens looks like we're gonna get intercepted by these zeros again uh, on the B-17s uh, they've got a lot of fuel those planes haven't they a lot a lot of fuel um, gonna go for another bombing run with some Catalinas over here not expecting loads once again and maybe those zeros will change course might just uh, run away if that's the case we'll try and get close with the Essex and try and finish that off actually be nice to get some use out of that Essex so we'll find out and we'll see you in a second 
Okay, so we have come into contact with that uh, Congo group, but it looks like Havasas have been launched from um, Guadalcanal to intercept our Catalinas, so we are going to have to go full speed into them. This group has come in so, so far away, so we're just uh, testing our luck here, really. Here we go. We are going to try and hit the Congo once again. So let's just change our course. It's a little more directly over that. I am very much expecting these harvesters to come over. And if they do, fine. We'll lose our Catalinas. Once again, uh, island or base um, airfield launched aircraft. They will replenish for free over the course of a couple of days. Um, so we're just going to tell everyone to go and, and attack straight away, really. Over here. Wait for these Catalinas to come in by themselves. Uh, once again, Catalina's huge, slow-moving targets over a lot of AA. Not good for us. This is a Shimakaze, though. Look at that. Look at that. Amazing destroyer there. Massive torpedo threat to us. A mini Kisakami. <laughs> Tiny Kisakami. Uh, 15 torpedoes it has there. For those that are possibly unaware, I'm sure you all know the Shimakaze. But we have all dropped. Not from an ideal location, of course. Or an ideal bearing because I was expecting the harvesters to come in. So we'll see what we get. Looks like, we'll just pause very quickly, that these guys are in AA range. They were shooting out to a very strange angle there. Um, not a worry. I think we'll come in a little closer and watch uh, watch the Congo here. So bombs will come in at any second. Hey, two hits. Two hits, one dud. <laughs> Always hurts to see dud bombs. Always hurts to see dud bombs. But we have lost those Catalinas to flak. That flak is coming for us lot. Look at that. That is very long range flak. Might not get in here with all of these, you know. Might not get in here with all of these. What's the damage reports on the Congo? Criticals are heavy. Oh, <laughs> I really hope we do get in with this because... Any extra bombs will help now. Really make a good difference. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, once again, just break an attack. Tell them to get straight in so we don't fluff this if we do overshoot it. Hopefully we get in there. Now, there's a harvesters to ruin our day. But you know what? I'm happy to get a couple bomb hits there. Not looking like we're getting anywhere with that flak. Look at that. Look at that. The harvesters coming in. Let's try... I reacted a little too slowly. This one's going to get us. And there we go. Not a worry. Not a worry. Look at the Congo. Dead in the water. That massive list of it. Can't complain too much. Really can't complain too much. It's not like we've lost any uh, permanent aircraft there. I'd rather lose um, airfield-based aircraft than carrier-based aircraft because it just takes so much longer to get the carrier-based aircraft back. And we do have to put a whole carrier out of action once we do rearm it. So I'm going to sit around here for a few minutes, see if the floods and fires develop a little once again. Uh, otherwise, see you in a second. Well, unfortunately, they did not um, develop into critical flooding or fires, which is rather unfortunate for us. So we are going to have to hit that again. So what we're going to do is use the range finder here. That'll be 370. What we can do in that case is launch. It was 370, wasn't it? I'm just going to double check that. I've already forgotten. Yeah, 370-ish to cut to Quaddle Canal. And it was just about over here, so don't even need that. Going to launch some Corsairs. Actually going to launch them. Do we want them with normal rockets or do we want them with tiny Tims? Probably really want them with normal rockets just for the endurance because uh, we're going to have to wait a bit of time um, for any extra planes to come out of uh, the Essex there. So we'll launch them with uh, HVARs. They can go straight in. We can wait a few minutes to get some attack aircraft out. There we go, see only just, that's with Renault Island as well, probably not able to get with the Essex out just, yeah, 0.3 hours we've got to wait. So what I'm gonna do is hold these back just a tad so they don't attract any fighters just yet. Ooh, single Corsairs found that. I'm gonna ignore that for now, unfortunately. We can have a look at that in a minute. More pressing masses at the moment. Very lucky they don't want to drop any troops on Melissa there because we can't. Um, interesting. A counter over here. Um, because we can't actually uh, fend off anything there at the moment. 
So you can try and sort us out at the moment. What do we actually need on Elias while I'm thinking about it? We need everything over there, don't we? No worries. Uh, let's go to manage cargo, uh, get one thing of supplies, um, one of engineering, another of that, some fuel. And what we'll do is merge group over here. Can we get in range of that? We can. Bring these up and they can come straight over to Melissa. Uh, let's not get too distracted though. When is Essex ready to launch planes? Es excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Launch aircraft, please. I think we'll go for some hell divers here. Uh, they have an amazing range. Look at that. Amazing range. Um, yeah, do we want hell divers? We're quite likely to lose quite a few of them. Might want to level bomb with Avengers. I know it sounds strange. Sounds strange. But uh, <laughs> it works. Uh, we're doing the unorthodox today. Um, hmm, that is sap bombs I've chosen. Let's go for two 1,000 pounders there. Is that going to be enough? We'll imagine that they're going to do it in number. I do you want to sink the Congo? Thousand pound bombs should be fine. It's just I'm a little worried that if we send in um, dive bombers, they are going to succumb to the amount of uh, AA from the ships there. They are getting scouted out there. Okay, so now we can go in with the Corsairs. Actually, they can. Where are we? TBF Avenger. They can just go in straight with that. So we can just guide the Avengers in there. That should work out. Nope. Where are you going? Where are you going? Just go straight over. Not quite following how I want there. No worries. It will come in just a tad too quickly. So okay, we'll just bring them back here. Just a little micro there. That should be just okay. Fingers crossed. Wish me luck. Right, where are we? We can see the formation over there. Brilliant. Uh, how do we want to approach this? Come from the rear, I think. Bring the Corsairs round just to scout ahead in case there are some surprise Hybuses or Zeros. No sign of the Zeros recently. It must have run out of fuel. So we're looking for Hybuses. The Oscars coming out. No worries. Let's bring the Avengers round then. Go for the flank. Number one is Congo. Uh, increase speed and increase altitude. When we're talking altitude bomb, I mean altitude bomb, we're going 2,000 meters, two kilometers into the air, like so. Two kilometers at a minimum, come straight on over, and let's see. Of course, the problem with this is they won't be quite so accurate. That's okay, that's okay. We're in number, massive number. And you know what? Quantity has a quality all its own, you know? So, I'm going to bring all of them over once again. I apologise for taking a little bit of time. But you do need to set it up. Do need to take time to set it up. That will do for a line at the moment. The idea is just so they get onto the rear of the Congo and we can move that as we need when we get closer. Did tell all the Corsairs to move, didn't we? Double check that. We did. They can go full speed then to scout ahead. And remember, these do have uh, light rockets on them, so we could try and take out either a destroyer or a cargo ship or two. Not going to target the cruisers just yet. I like to play with my food. I like to save them for later. You know what? It looks like the Congo is being left behind. So if we did bring in dive bombers, that might have worked out okay. So we're going to skip on over now until we to uh, when we're in range. Okay, so we're just coming into range now with our Avengers. We're just going to change the course and speed of tab. We're going to slow down with all of them just a little bit, so it gives us time to react and maneuver to get into position here. Um, and that is fine. We're roughly in the cloud layer, just getting up there. Visibility is 54% still, and I think well, that's going to be about fine for this group. So if we Break attack over here with this group. This is called playing optimally and efficiently. <laughs> this group can do the same while we're moving in. We have already told our Corsairs to dive down and try and look at a Kamigawa Maru. Gonna bring this one round actually just to wait around for the uh, behind the rear Corsairs to get into position there, catch up with it. Just double checking their altitudes there. 
This group, I think, can get going as well. Might as well, before we overshoot it once again. Just going to pause very quickly, having said the word overshoot. Don't want to be doing that at all. Because we've done it far too much recently. Far, far too much. And hopefully their AA is more focused on these Corsairs, actually, if they do start firing at us. Seemed to fire out a loss earlier when uh, we had the uh, Catalinas out, didn't we? But we are now dropping. Looks like this one in particular on the right here is very much out of position, so that's not going to be the best of first drops. But if we don't lose Avengers, we won't have lost anything here. It looks like the Corsairs are coming in, so I'm just going to break there very quickly. I do apologise to tell all of these Corsairs to go in like so. And we can watch. We can sit and watch. Alrighty then, so Congo is sinking. Excellent news. Finally, finally something beefy has gone down. So what we hear is 17 to 18. Just going to make sure these form up and get out very nicely. There, form up box just for now. High altitude, high speed. Go to their um, front, go to their bow. Just get out of there, please. We've lost two Corsairs at the moment. Don't want to lose any more. You never do, but these ones are still in the midst of their flak there right into their small arms as well. Um, that is number four. I'm going to take a very quick report. Heavy damage but no flooding. It's tempting to go in and finish that off actually. Very, very tempting. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to get the rest of the Corsairs over here um, to actually form up in one big, one, one big, uh, big, big group like that. Because I like big groups. You know me by now. They're the, they're the best groups, my favourites. We're actually going to go to their flank because there's no Congo there now and they're rearranging their formation. Just get the other Corsairs out of there nice and easy. That is one brilliant sinkage there. A battleship down, our first enemy battleship down. And of course it's got to be the uh, old Congo there. Sad tear in my eyes, it is a British made battleship. Some would say a battle cruiser, of course. So we're going to slow down here very quickly. Bit of an oxymoron, slow down quickly. We're going to go in and uh, not the ideal approach here. Not the ideal approach at all. We'd rather come from a lengthways angle to strafe down any ship. But I want to just get in, slow down, avoid as much AA as possible here. Take control of this mangly a little so we can catch up and make a uh, big formation might just uh, scissor in and out to watch that flak. We'll be down to me 100% then if we take any, but we need to dive down and attack now. Hoping uh, time on target and just sheer volume of fire will uh, start some sort of explosions and fires. But we have lost another Corsair there. It was inevitable doing this, getting greedy, but that will do it with a magazine explosion. That's exactly what we were hoping for. Another Corsair there lost. We're going to form up once again, and just for the sake of order, get out, get out, everyone, please. Come over here, full speed, that's sunk, brilliant. What we can do is just retreat then. Excellent, very nice little raid there, very, very nice little raid. And I think we'll leave that uh, task force to itself now. Um, should have encouraged it to leave permanently, by force. Um, but if it does start threatening our Essex and War Spike, we will send out another attack. Very happy with our losses there. No Avengers went down. That is why we sent with the altitude bombing, the level bombing there. Um, because we're out of their AA range uh, and they just didn't, didn't get the chance to hit us. Excellent. The, uh, <laughs> the wonders, the bounties of the unorthodox there.
So let's continue. All right, so we've been waiting around the gateway of Guadalcanal for about 24 hours now, um, or just under that, uh, because I've chosen this time exactly to go in and just unload our cargo on to Melissa. Don't think that was gonna be quite enough, was it? No, definitely not gonna be enough with uh, just that over here. It might be, actually. I might have just uh, misread that. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. We've got um, one one supplies so we may have to come back for that that's absolutely fine we might even be able to take definitely take the supplies off of uh, uh Renault island there to uh make a shortcut there to upgrade that so this is the first run we're going to do to melissa going at uh roughly midday it's going to close to uh 1300 hours now that's okay just so that we can at least retreat at the in the dark we're absolutely going to send out fighters from the essex uh, to um go over because we will get spotted on the approach here uh going into melissa and we will get intercepted our subs have made us over here no contact at the moment just going to keep them active roaming around absolutely fine patrol up and down here for a little bit no worries. Um, our subs have made it into the Solomon Sea as well. Not sighted anything just yet. And our supplies from Australia are going to reinforce Milne Bay. That would be tickety-boo. Lovely stuff. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so let's go and do that. Um, I'm sure the next time I see will be uh, when we send out some Corsairs to defend the supply convoy here. So let's carry on. Okay, so I have completely misjudged uh, the timing here. We have, of course, approached under cover of night, which means um, we did come in undetected. Um, but that does mean we're going to have limited time to make our escape. So that's okay. It just means that it's reversed a little bit. We're going to get detected at some point. Um, whether it happens this day or the next, it's going to happen. So let's unload cargo. Brilliant. How does that leave us? Um, so like we said, we do still need just a few supplies there. Maybe we should have put some supplies on the uh, destroyers here rather than bloody troops. That's okay, no worries. Slight miscalculation, if we go back down here, just means we come back with even more supplies, really. Um, for the next, if we do decide to go to, uh, oh, we're gonna need it for a level three anyway, so it's not a problem there at all. So we'll all compound on each other in the end. All for the best, see you in a second. Okay, well you can see here, look, the time is uh, nearly 7 in the morning, 700 hours. Got fighters over our supplies over here. We've got YouTuber luck here. Not being detected, not going to bother. Not going to bother. We've got the usual flights coming over Port Moresby. Might as well send out stuff. You know what, I've been really enjoying sending them out with bombs just to uh, just to abuse uh, the cargo ships here, really. <laughs> so we'll send that out. There's like the fighters are going for our bow fighters. They might be intercepted there because they've changed their mind. Suits me just fine. We can outrun them with uh, the lightnings there. And we'll go in. Okay, so we're unloading on Port Moresby like that. Do we have enough to upgrade? Yes, we do. No, no we don't. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> A massive idiot there. We need 40 more fuel, which is rather annoying there. Just a tad. We can pick it up from Port Moresby. We're not planning to pick that uh, or upgrade that again. It's just a little quicker than going all the way back to Australia. No worries. But we definitely can unload over here. Will that be enough? Yes. Excellent. So that is more radar coverage and more aircraft. Thank you very much. Only need a few supplies then. Little bit of fuel, which is rather unfortunate because we can carry uh, only 140. Rather, we could swap things around there. But it is only a couple drops of uh, engineering, actually. So it should be able to do that on the next run. I'm looking forward to that very much. We have left the battleships over here. Very specific reason for that. Um, we're going to look at the dockyard. Got five days left on the Bogue. They're going to stay there for that five days because um, we'll get resupplied. We'll get reimbursed for the Bogue. Maybe we can get... Um, an I'm thinking about independence rather than a Bogue out for uh, the, these people. That should come just uh, before we get the uh, replenish from the Bogue. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then the, the world is ours really you know <laughs> this game is our oyster we can get whatever we want then that's pretty much my list of things to get uh, done aside from a wasp so that might be the top of the list otherwise so we're going to carry on we're going to bring these back um, we don't have anything else no it's fuel and such we need so they are going to go to the New Hebrides that's okay we'll do that in a minute hopefully we find something big once again for the rest of this video 
All right, look at this. This is taking the piss now. <laughs> I know there's only a level one airfield over here and we do have access to four lightnings and such now. Four lightnings is nothing really in my eyes, especially, I think that's after we've lost some as well, so there will be more, but nope, not gonna get intercepted. We nearly got scouted there. We should have been in their radar coverage there. I would have been, I would have been if it were if it me, but all right, there we go. That's why we're not seeing anything. We did just see a submarine over there, I think. We'll let that wander, uh, wander on for a bit. Ooh, we need to check this out. This might only be small. We do need to check it out. I think you can see it there. That's a very small cargo. Oh, not very small at all. Not very small. Very nice little. Is that you, buddy? It is. Oh, okay. Lovely little merchant convoy here with uh, a Kumanagara as well. Not a lot of AA, it's mostly coming from the destroyers. Uh, Yubari's AA is not the worst actually for Japanese standards. Destroyer escorts, so it's not necessarily flak more small arms off of them, so we could certainly go for that. Uh, if we mark that very quickly, cool, and we can bring the Essex over. Um, what's the distance over there? Uh, we can definitely make that, we'll just send over, um, actually, tell you what, tell you what, what have we got, 400-ish, we're going to assume they're going to carry on this line, tell what we can do for that before we launch anything, is get a kingfish out to make sure that that does stay within visual range there, we get another one out to check its second possible uh, course there. Actually, that's rather threatening for Reno Island. That's very threatening for Reno Island. Very nice spot there. So we'll try that and we'll carry on and then we'll launch lightnings and such over there. Okay, so you can see here we have found them. They're on the line to go actually towards Reno Island. This is the first time I've seen uh, Japanese go for Reno Island actually. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, source of <laughs> Very happy that uh, we're getting a new challenge. Um, but not happy that they go over such an undefended base here. Um, we're going to go for... Uh, we're going to be nasty and go over the hospital ship first uh, because that's the one that we carry the most troops as well as this Aratara Maru. Once we get rid of these two, um, that will nullify pretty much uh, the invasion there. We're going to low altitude this, rush in with our lightnings. Once again, I'm abusing this. They are armed with some very hefty bombs. We're going to manually control this so we get into a decent position here. Do want to broadside it. Just turn out a little more so that we can turn back in a little easier. Might want to slow down our speed so we can do that. Yeah, and there we go. That should do it. Slow down once again. And that will do it. So what I'm going to do is speed up a tad. I say a tad nearly full. Uh, and that will do though. That will do. I only need a couple bomb hits with how great these bombs are. And that's okay, might want to increase everyone's, I thought since they were in formation when we ordered them to increase their speed, that they might all do it. No worries, no worries. This is what we call a lightning strike, uh, because it's very fast <laughs> hit and run tactics here. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, that'll do it. I reckon that'll do it. <laughs> I reckon that'll do it. No, those lightnings should be all right to get out of there. Few hits, but they can recover. They can absolutely recover. That's going to go down in a second. He says, "There we go. Easy first kill." So the next target is the Aratama Maru. Let's get on that. We are going to one lovely command point as well. It's how you build the command points up. It's just lightning striking. So that's about here. Once again, going for uh, Renault Island. Going to bring this Kingfisher over to circle round, see if we can carry on with our um, scousing there. This is returning to base. This one's going to come straight back round and help out there. Okay, I was very worried that we lost sight of this group then. That would have been very embarrassing. But this looks like it's going to be the only lightning strike we can get off today uh, because look at the time. We've just about made it. So very close to 1900 hours. Um, so like I said, the Aratama Maru is the one that's going to be carrying the most uh, troops there. So we are going to go straight for that. Once again, decreased speed. In fact, because it's nighttime, that is helping us, or evening at least. 32% visibility is very, very useful for us. Gonna go straight in. Top speed. Slow down a tad now. Align just a tad better, actually. I think that would do from here. And once again, break, attack, 
Break, attack. There's a rhythm to this, a rhythm to it. Oh, look at that, look at that. Once again, I think that would do it. We even got a magazine explosion on that out of time, Amado, so that will be going down very quickly. Very, very quickly indeed. <laughs> a beautiful sight. Beautiful sight there. So I doubt that will cause them to retreat. It is sinking now. Um, but it shouldn't threaten Renault Island anymore. In fact, we... We can keep the lightning here because we're not going to get any other um, flights off today. So we're actually going to regroup and go for the Wenshaw Maru. Um, go reduce our speed very quickly. Go down once again to strafing altitude. Um, we targeted the wrong ship there. Here we go. Tell them to come back in. So I'm not trying to form up. I'm an idiot. There we go. Box will do for now. And come back down. Circle round. Like that easy <laughs> he says we're actually gonna try and come from its stern there no worries yeah I'm struggling with the visibility here forget the percentage on the game it's just dark <laughs> it's just dark it's gonna be difficult to see uh, we're gonna reduce our speed almost to nothing here so we do get more shots on target and you know what, I'm going to tell them to attack now. Just speed up a tad. No, we can't because we've told them to attack. So this is the most dangerous part now because we're going so slowly. We can see we're in the crossfire of some small arms here. So it is possible we'll lose a lightning here, unfortunately. But if we get a decent run on this Wensho Maru, I'm going to say it's worth it. Absolutely say it's worth it. There you go, magazine explosion, no lightnings down. Can only return to base now and hope that uh, we have deterred them, unfortunately. Uh, we do have troops and supplies there. Um, so actually, Renault Island is very safe. Look at the number there. Um, what, four destroyers and two light cruisers are not going to be enough to contend with 5.2 thousand troops backed up by 4,000 supplies. Whether they retreat or not, we're gonna take Renault, we're gonna keep hold of Renault Islands, what I wanna say. And that, I think, I think I'll be fine. What I think I'm gonna do um, is try and upgrade Milne Bay once again. We'll see how we look time-wise then. That might end the episode there. We've got a lot packed in today. It's been action-packed once again. Very, very happy with that. I hope you're enjoying it, really. So let's carry on. Okay, so um, same plan as we said earlier. Resupply, reinforce, and that. Our submarines are pushed up, and I'm actually, you know, I'm hoping this isn't misinformation. I'm really hoping we've accidentally caused a carrier here. I've pushed, pushed them up, you know, knowing that they send ships out here, but um, it's early enough in the morning that this might well be misinformation. Actually, no, it's clear day. Oh, that's not misinformation. You can see just on the horizon there. What we're going to do is I'm not going to. Uh, go straight over there. What I'm going to do is uh, assume they have aircraft out already, send this uh, flying fish to 30 meters below, and we're going to look through our periscope here. Uh, ooh, is that an Issei? We'll have to double check that. Does it like another Taiyo though? Hmm, okay. That's bearing 270. Ooh, we're facing them. I didn't think to check that. Oh, 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 uh, this is an Issei as well. Oh, we've struck the mother load. <laughs> um, unfortunately, having said that, um, I am going to send both of our um, submarines torpedoes directly at the Taiyo here. Um, it should be a Taiyo actually. I think we sunk uh, just Taiyos. Can we check? We can't check the dockyard just yet. So it could be a Zuiho. 
Um, that's not a bother though. What does matter is we are going to be in range when they come towards us. So it's just a waiting game until they come right on top of us and then we can fire out um, some torpedoes. One thing that will help us actually identify it is we're going to go CVL, try and identify it as Taiyo at the moment. Uh, can I find any difference just yet? Not on the deck, not on the board design there. So we're going to say Taiyo for now because that's what they've been sending at us. Um, the IGN, like myself, does like their Taiyos. This is like a Tone, actually. It is a Tone. Oh, oh, oh. Rather nasty force here. Issei, Tone, Takao, low supplies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. What we're going to do then is once again assume that they do have um, planes in the sky and go down to 30 meters and actually just wait, just wait for them to come on top of us. So they don't, they won't spot us if we stay down here. Just make sure we're all aligned, going straight, and I'll just see when we're in range. Okay, I think we're looking good to strike this. Um, we're going to go to periscope depth with both of our submarines here. And just to illustrate the points I made earlier, well, why we think it's a tayo, to help us identify it as a tayo, um, your solution will rise or decrease depending on whether you've identified the ship properly. Let's go to Zwiho. And we can see our solution is gradually being lowered there. Not by a lot, for sure. But if we go back to Taiyo, instantly back to 85 and rising. So it is a Taiyo that we have here. Uh, what we're going to do is help our solution a little bit more. Uh, we are, yeah, we are at periscope depth now. We can see us poking us poking up there. Going to raise our scope with both ships. They do have planes in the sky. Uh, we're going to activate our radars. That should help us a little bit. Yep, we can see our solution now going above 90 to 100, roughly. And not, you never see exactly 100, but uh, 99. I'll happily take that. Um, not entirely liking the angle just yet, actually. Might give that a little bit more time. No sign of the planes just yet. Want a slightly flatter broadside there. We are able to fire at that, of course. So, um, you know what? Let's look through that again. <sighs> Give it a little bit more time. Just a tad. And I really do mean just a tad because we'll hit the escorting ships otherwise and we'll put ourselves at risk. Now, I am just going to pause very quickly and explain. I am going to fire six torpedoes from both ships at a two degree spread. And I'll put a picture on the screen now to uh, help illustrate why I'm doing that. So this is the American torpedo experience you're looking at here. So let's fire off with both ships. All six torpedoes can go. There we go, lovely sight. Oh, brilliant sight. So now that they're both out, what we can do is of course tell them to run away. Um, scope down down to about let's say 50 is there a thermal layer there's one at 69 very nice indeed um, our test depth is 91 so we can go below that so let's go to 70 um, just to be safe silent running uh, we're going to turn this one out to starboard run away uh, we're going to our speed is only going to be two knots uh, we're going to do exactly the same with this one scope down 70 meters below Two knots, silent running. This is going to turn out to port. Cool. That's okay. Just getting a notification that radar needs to be turned off because we are now too deep. We have the periscope downed. So, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for hits. Fingers crossed for absolutely no duds, but just enough hits at least to sink this Taiyo. This is the first opportunity we've had to actually take them by surprise rather than vice versa. So we're very, very happy about that. <sighs> Wish me luck.
Alright, see guys, I think we're doing well. We do have a destroyer coming out for us. Looks like a... No, it's not. It's a Hatsaharu. It nearly said Fubuki. Uh, it doesn't even have three torpedo launchers there. And the gun at the rear gave it away for me. That is sinking though. I was just about to look at a report. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Very, very happy with that. I think that's all of them down now, actually, as far as Taiyos are concerned. Uh, no, it's not. We have only sunk the one. Did we sink a... I could have sworn we sunk two. Let's go over to Zwiho. Oh, it was a Zwiho we sunk previously. Absolutely fine. Guessing a little confused there. Um, yeah, uh, I think we're okay with these destroyers as well. They don't really seem to know exactly where we are. It's slowing down a little too much. Let's listen out for some sonar pings. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Didn't hear anything there. Did not hear anything. Don't know why this one was going at seven knots. Did you see the cavitation on that? So that is not going to help us. But um, they clearly don't know where we are. This one's actually turning away now very slightly. So they think we're much closer than that. So I think we can get away with just retreating here. Oh, oh very, very happy about that. Let's get out. Absolute get out. Two command points gained. Uh, we were telling them to go back to Guadalcanal anyway. So we're going to do that right now maybe we can intercept them once again but if not they're open for air attacks now from both uh, Melissa and our Essex which does still have a full strike group available um, so that is going to happen in the next episode I'm afraid guys we're going to end it by going over to Milne Bay I think and um, upgrading that okay so second time's a charm that should be now let's unload and don't see anything wrong there we go level 3 airfield Brilliant stuff. Very, very happy indeed. So much radar coverage. So many airplanes are there. Uh, we can't check exactly how it's affected our air groups just yet, but we can do that in the next video. Uh, that is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a brilliant pleasure actually presenting to you today. Finally getting into our stride here. Uh, we have sunk today. Where are we? We are on, can we find the Congo? So we've sunk Congo, a couple Nippon Marus, a couple hospital ships, Wensho, Aratama, and of course the Taiyo. That is excellent. What does that bring our total up to? 41 total ships sunk by day to 33. Decent, you know? Decent stuff. Very, very happy indeed. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm the Edify Gamer, and I hope your nights and days are auspicious. Goodbye.